ABC, Jimmy here, how you doing? Um, got another video, um, want to show you some of the new uh, vinyl that has just come in. Uh, most of this, um, some of it I found um, while hunting, uh, and then some of it was ordered online, uh, which is my favorite thing to do, because I can never find anything I like um, in the record stores um, or when I'm digging. So, uh, But I did um, find some really cool things uh, while digging recently um, that I was kind of surprised uh, that was there. Um, so why don't we get started? Um, first, I want to kind of show you this. Um, Believe it or not, um, I have, I, I knew of um, Daniel Johnson's work from, you know, way back, um, you know, when he was, when he was releasing cassettes, um, and I actually had this on cassette, um, it was my first cassette from Daniel Johnson um, that I owned, uh, I don't know where it went, um, but I, I did have an original cassette, it might be somewhere around the house, um, who knows, but um, I had to um, repurchase it because it's definitely my favorite Daniel Johnson album. Um, this one, uh, along with uh, the one just before it, um, Yip, is um, also excellent. But I, I like this one better. Uh, this is probably my favorite one from him because of the, the, the different instruments and different um, samples he used. Um, the, he, he played guitar on this one. Um, I think I heard a little ukulele. Um, he also played his little pump organ on this one, um, some piano on this one, and sampled um, some big band music um, where he'd kind of sing his own lyrics over um, Johnny Dankworth's um, orchestra on a few songs. And believe it or not, they're really, you know, it's, it sounds kind of lame, but it's not. It's, it's, it's an engaging listen. Um, you. It, if any of you, you know, if you know of this guy's work, you know it's very intimate, it's very personal. Um, but this is, uh, in my mind, this is definitely my favorite of his um, due to the fact that he plays so many different instruments on it and it's so varied and there's so many samples on it. Um, it's just cool. And I know it says unfinished on it, but it's, I mean, to me, it sounds finished. Um, even the, the, the work that, you would think is unfinished on side one um, with the smaller, uh, you know, the snippet songs. Um, they kind of it, 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 it kind of forms a medley. It's almost like what he wanted to do. Um, and according to a friend, I, I read um, a friend's account of this album when he was recording it and what he was thinking. And this is what he wanted. Um, so for him to say it's unfinished, I, I don't know if it's unfinished or not, but it certainly sounds finished to me. It sounds great. Um, it's definitely is. His, uh, his most varied effort, um, whereas the one prior, which is excellent, Yip Music, it's good, but he plays the pump, or, pump organ on every single song, and there's just no variety um, versus this one. Um, this is actually on, um, this was pressed on Homestead in 1988. Um, it's the first time it was ever on um, a vinyl record, so uh, Homestead released it in 88, uh, even though the album is from 83, so... Uh, but there's the artwork, uh, you know, that Kurt Cobain made famous. He wore the shirt and everyone went crazy. Um, and plus, if you haven't seen that movie, The Devil and Daniel Johnson, you need to see that too, that documentary. Um, it's a little upsetting to watch it because it's kind of depressing, but um, check it out if you're into them. Uh, next up is a couple new Guided by Voices um, LPs that uh, I picked up. Uh, this one, um, and believe me, I don't need any more Guided by Voices original propellers, but I'll tell you, when I, when I saw this one posted, um, I, I flipped. Um, the cover, this is probably, um, out of the covers, out of the original handmade propeller covers I've seen, and um, you know, I've seen quite a few, uh, pr probably about 50% of them, because they're online, you can actually see them online. Um, this this particular cover here is in my top five out of the ones that were made um, out of the 500 that were made. Now I haven't seen all of them. I've only seen about half of them because there's so many of them that are kind of missing in action. Um, this is number 170, as you can see up there, and um, it's just I love the, the the figure on there. It's just so cool. Um, definitely my in my top top five out of the ones I've seen. And I've seen probably, what, about 200, 250 of them. 
Um, there's still about 250 plus that are missing um, or haven't been posted. They're not missing, but they haven't been posted. I'm sure there's, you know, good 40 to 50 of them that have been destroyed or, or damaged or melted or warped or in, and tossed out over the years. Um, so out of the 500, I'm going to guess, just a, a, an estimated guess, there's maybe about 420 of them still in existence. So, yeah. So it, that makes it even rare. Um, the back the back cover was colored by Jimmy Pollard. Um, I believe he, he colored pretty... Actually, this one, I shouldn't say that. This one here is um, a Pete Jamison uh, cover, uh, the manager for life. Um, he made some really great covers. And I, I believe he co he colored the back, but I could be wrong. Um, next is this um, propeller, which is sealed. Um, this one I don't think you'll find online. No one's ever posted it. So this is one of the missing the MIAs that is now no longer MIA. So I'm showing it to you. And as you can see, it's one of the lettered backs. Um, Jimmy Pollard um, did 26 of these backs um, with a letter. So A through Z, this is I. Um, so there's only 26 with a letter, and so they're definitely um, harder to come by. Um, you can see the sheen on this because it's sealed. It's never been opened. Um, and you can see the lyrics here. I don't know if you can see it with the glare, but the lyrics are of the song Particular Damaged with the Earthworm, um, kind of telling that story. Um, what's cool about these lyrics is, first of all, Bob Pollard made the cover it's his handwriting, it's his lyrics. Um, Jimmy Pollard did the back because he did all the letters. It's number 315. And what's cool about this is um, the song Particular Damaged, um, if you've ever listened to it, you can't understand the lyrics. So it's really nice to, to be able to, to see what that song was actually about. Um, drafted for the troops, we are the earthworm providence, Magnan magnanimous to the sensual flag, Sensational flag, sorry, handwriting's a little. It's a drag. It's all a drag. It's all a gag. Separate traffic in cat shit attic. Gotta kill the copperheads for God white whiskey nose. So, <laughs> so there it is. But it's actually pretty. The lyrics are pretty cool. So, um, excellent. Next, uh, this here I got in line. Uh, this is also a handmade cover. Um, this is Tower Recordings, and this is their first full length called Rehearsals for Roseland. And again, just like Propeller, they made 500 of these all numbered. This is number 433, and they're all handmade. So each cover is different. Um, this is one of my favorite Tower Recordings LPs because uh, it's completely, it's lo-fi. Um, it's, it's like the original Freak Folk band right here. So this was um, released in 95, I believe. Um, but a lot of this was written between like 92 and 95. So, um, so that's Matt Valentine's original band. PG6 is in this band. I love this cover. I've seen a lot of these covers, a lot of the different artwork they did because um, it's all handmade. This is one of my favorite, most involving covers of this album. Um, so I had to snap it up when I saw it. They got kind of lazy towards the end with this, um, and, and the covers weren't as cool. But that's a great cover. Uh, next is Camberwell Now, The Ghost Trade. Um, so if you are familiar with um, the band This Heat, it's a, uh, it's a uh, late 70s, you know, early, early 80s, 1980. Um, post-punk band, but they're kind of more than that. They were jazz, they were post-punk. Um, I mean, it was just free, free, fun, free folk. I mean, it was a little bit of everything thrown in a blender. Um, this is this features um, two band members uh, from that band. Actually, Charles Hayward, the singer uh, from This Heat, um, is the one who started this side project, um, and uh, it's it's. I mean, if you like this heat, you're going to like this band here. I love this artwork, by the way. Check it out. This is a first press. Um, it's Camberwell now. It's from 1986 on Inc. 19 Records. Um, but yeah, if you, like, uh, if you like this heat, you'll love this. This is a little more progressive than this heat, but it's, it's just as cool. 
So check it out. Got a few more for you. Um, an OG press of my favorite Sebado album, Bake Sale, on Sub Pop Records. Great album. And oh, here's a cool one. Um, this is called uh, White Flight is the band. White Flight. And if you've heard the band The Anniversary, they released two full-length albums um, back, you know, 20 years ago or so. Um, this is um, one of the guitarists. Um, this is his side band. This is what he's doing now, actually. Um, and it's if you like like early Beck, like Mellow Gold Beck, then this is right up your alley. It's so um, it's a double double album, but it's it's really innovative. It's it's very original, um, and it kind of flows through. There's no space between the songs, so it's hard to tell one song from the next sometimes. But um, it, it's very it's very funky. It's very Beck like from Mellow Gold era that era. Um, maybe Odelay, Mellow Gold, and then even Stereo um, Pathetic Soul Manure in that kind of area there. It's lo-fi for sure, but um, it's got like electronic, uh, a little bit of electronic in there, a little postal service, um, if you like that. Um, a little bit of no twist uh, mixed with Beck. So, good stuff. Uh, next up is a um, Liquor Giants. They're self-titled on Matador. Um, if you are a Big Star fanatic like I am, um, then you have to own this Liquor Giants album. You need to get this today. And there's only, I think, one left uh, from an American seller on Discogs. If you want to grab it, he's selling it for $15 plus shipping. And that's a steal of a price because there's not many of these. There weren't many of these pressed to begin with. And um, once, that, once they're gone, it's going to be really hard to find. Um, it's Liquor Giant self-titled album from 1996, and um, it, it's it's big star with a little more crunch. Um, really, really good stuff like September Girls Big Star. So, but it's called the Liquor Giants. Check them out. Um, the dude who started this band um, was the guitarist in the Gun Club and also um, in Pontiac Brothers. So, if you're familiar with those bands, this is not the music in this though is not like the music from Gun Club. Um, in his, his former bands. This is um, this is Big Star right here. So check it out, 1996 Matador Records. Two more, Weevil, Tall Dwarfs. Love the Tall Dwarfs, love Lo-Fi. Um, this is my my humble opinion, probably their best. Um, you know, some people will argue um, that uh, what Fork Songs is, is also great, the three EPs. Um, the very first comp they released was great. I mean, but this for a cohesive album, this is it right here for me, Weevil. Um, this is a New Zealand uh, pressing. And it comes with a cool little booklet inside. Um, comes with like a 20-page, uh, uh, not a fanzine, but I'll show it to you. It's like a, um, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, but. It's a, it's a cold 20, it's really thick booklet, and it has all kinds of uh, pictures um, relating to the album. It's like a comic book, almost, you know, telling, talking about the songs. There's some lyrics in here, as you can see. So if you're going to get this album, you've got to get this, you've got to make sure it comes with this. And, you know, when you search for it, make sure that that booklet's in there because it, it definitely adds to um, the experience. Flying Nun Records, gotta love the uh, the label on that. Flying Nun, boy, they really released a lot of good stuff, a lot of good Australian bands, New Zealand bands, the Bats, Chris Knox, the Dwarfs. All right, we'll pop this over here, and one last one, the Donner Party. Um, this one here, I found. In a record store. Hey, I guess I got another record coming. Hang on, folks. Uh, hi. Uh, how you doing, sir? I got one for you. All right. Thank you. All right. Be safe tomorrow. All right. Sorry about that, everyone. I got a couple more. Look at this. It's mail day. Got a couple that just came in the mail. 
We got one here. I know what this is. This is um, this is Soft Effects by Spoon. Um, and this is from overseas. And I ordered a couple from overseas, so I have no idea what this is. Um, do you want to do an unboxing right now? Let's do an unboxing. But let's finish um, the Donner Party. Donner Party is basically Sam Coombs from Quasi. This is his first band. And it's really good. It's really good. This is a first press on Cryptovision Records. And I was, I was psyched to find this. I think it was like 10 bucks. I was so psyched. It's Gem Mint. Um, if you like, um, oh God, what's that? Uh, Camper Van Beethoven. You will love this. Love it. The Donner Party. Check it out. All right, so let's do an unboxing. My first unboxing. Uh, well, I know this is Spoon Soft Effects, but it's kind of a rare album, so let's show it to you. God, I love the, uh, I'm not sure I love the Amazon box. Um, sending a very expensive record in an Amazon box is not one of these Amazon mailers. <laughs> not always the best. Um, I don't mind Amazon mailers as long as it's a... You know, something that's, you know, you got plenty of padding inside and it's not like a super expensive album. Um, this particular one is pretty expensive. So hopefully it survived because there is not another one to buy. This was the, uh, this one here wasn't even posted actually. It was um, a situation where I had, um, I was in a conversation with someone and, and they hooked me up. Um, they, they needed the money and they were willing to sell it. Here it is. It survived. Spoon. Yeah. Soft effects. Love this album. Glad I have it. That's the cover. And, oh, that's nice. It's in the, I'm not going to remove it now. There's the label. Cool. Can't wait to spin this. Uh, let's see what else we got. By the way, if you're not a Spoon fan, you need to become a Spoon fan. Um, I'm not particularly into uh, like the newer, newer stuff, like Hot Thoughts. It's, it, it's a good album, um, but I'm really big on the the, the post-punk uh, Brit Daniels um, series of Sneaks, Telefono. Um, oh God, I don't know. Girls, something with girls in it. The 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 2000 release. Um, those are my favorite. Gaga Ga is great, uh, but that's that's like early Spoon is my favorite. When Brit was going through like the Wire in Pixies phase that he went through. Oh, Close Lobsters, cool. This came in. Um, Close Lobsters. This is a um, an '80s band. Um, definitely got a little. Um, uh, jangle in them. Um, so if you like Jingle Jangle, like REM, um, you know, Joy, well, not Joy Division, but REM, that type of jangle. Um, the Close Lobsters are really good. I know some people have shown their, think their first album, this is their second one. So, um, the second one I actually like the sound a little better, but um, the first one's good too. I gotta get the first one eventually. So there you go. Excellent. Well, thanks for tuning in. Um, hope to see you guys real soon, but thanks for watching as always. Take care. Peace.